everybody, it's Jay Warren with another On the Clock. You know, we have 17 fire stations all throughout the American Dream City, and they have some very specialized teams within those units. Here's City Manager Trey Yelverton with more on how the technical rescue team works. Thanks, Jay. Today I'm out with Station 8 and our technical rescue team. We're going to be doing some exercises at the University of Texas at Arlington and practice some of the technical skills that they do to help keep our community safe. Now I'm here with Eddie Saldivar. I'm going to ask you a little bit about what do you guys do? It sounds pretty cool. Absolutely. Basically, anything confined space, any structural collapse, uh, high angle rescue, trench rescue, any heavy machinery rescue, that's us. Awesome. Anything that's a structure that has severe damage, we're going to come in and do a lot of that operation. What would you call this vehicle and, and tell me a little bit about some of the tools inside. This thing here is set up really to carry special operations equipment. We've got anything from breaching breaking tools where we can get through concrete. Um, we've got generators so we can bring our own power with us. We've got high lift airbags where we can lift 18 wheelers. We've even got jacks in there that can lift trains if we need to. So you have an exercise for us today where I'm going to join in on on uh, helping you guys uh, experience a little bit of some practice. So today, our scenario is gonna be um, an F3, F4 tornado sets down middle of Arlington, and we've got a structure behind us, the Brazos House, that has taken severe damage, and we've already conducted some search operations, we've cleared the building, um, and we have identified a location where we think there's a victim. Sounds good, why don't we get to work? Basically, we're getting through a wall so that we can use our camera to get in there and ensure there's no bodies on the other side of this wall when we start breaching it. This next team's gonna come in. They're gonna bring in some jackhammers, some small breaching tools, and that's gonna get them through this wall. Let's try this. Make sure you're safe. You got eye protection, respiratory helmet. All right, we've got this outline here in orange. We wanna stay within that, that box there, that triangle. Okay, let's try. Cold. All right, so at this point, we're going to start putting rescuers in. Let me ask you a question. Yes, sir. Is there a reason why that's a triangle yes. versus a square or a circle? So structurally, it's solid. It's, it's going to give us a little more structural support. It's more okay. sound. But also, when we're talking about time, time is of the essence. Instead of a square bringing in one more line, it's just speed yep. and, and stability. Really. Okay. All right, these guys are looking good, great opening. All right, Trey, here in a second, I'm going to have you crawl through this opening. You'll meet up with your team. All right, you ready to get in this Come hole? Come on through. We've made it to the secondary uh, point where we know there's a victim. We can hear somebody down there. These guys have created a, an opening for an inspection hole. Right now, we're going to set our cameras in. We're going to make sure it's clear. We're okay. almost there. We can hear them on the other side. Yeah. They know we're coming, and I guarantee you they feel good about this. We've got two teams working at the same time. We've got one res rescue one, rescue two. And so when rescue one's working, rescue two is setting up the forecasting what we're going to need next. But we're going to transition, in, or transition into uh, getting one of the rescuers on the rig. We'll drop him down. He'll go down. He'll uh, hit the bottom. Take a look around, make sure it's safe. Ready? Ready. All right, Lauren, rescue two. I'll try, you'll use your feet and your hands down there to help yourself through that hole, okay? We've identified that the victim is pretty stable. Got some issues with a leg, but other than that, nothing life-threatening. At this point, if they would have found anything special, any special needs for the patient, they would communicate back with the, the responders up on the first floor. Let's pull him up and see how he sits. I thought he was going to stop. Yeah. That was a great job. You guys worked hard. Now, to, to finish us off, we just got to get you out of the hole, get you back on the solid ground, and we're done. Well, we've had an eventful morning here at the Brazos House, so I uh, appreciate uh, getting to learn uh, how you go about your business, the professionalism that you approach it with, the safety that you approach it with, and all the, all the tools that you deploy. And so just on behalf of all of our residents, thank you for all you do, keeping us safe and uh, coming to get us out of places like this. Absolutely, I'll okay. Thanks, Captain. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Rudy. Thank you, sir. All right, appreciate everything. Yes, be safe.
sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Thanks, Trey, and thanks to you at home for watching. We'll see you back here next time for another On the Clock.